Hello fellow mega lovers, how are you doing today? Welcome back to another day of Indie Miss. Today we are going to be talking about the worst indie makeup products of 2020. These are things that I hated, regretted, wished I'd returned. We've got quite a lot to talk about. So before we jump on in, if you are new to my channel, hello, my name is Amy. I love doing videos all about indie makeup, so if that sounds like content you'd be interested in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now let's just go ahead and jump right on in. I have so much in front of me, I don't even know where to start. I'm just gonna grab at random. So this is from Lawless. I think they might be called Lawless Beauty if I remember correctly. I hadn't tried anything from them. I feel like I heard them getting a little bit of hype. I know that they're available on Sephora. I believe that they are owned by Annie Lawless, might be her name. That's just like a distant, like faded memory in the back of my brain, so that could be wrong. But I thought, you know what, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and just try one product from them. So I decided to get a lipstick because they released a lipstick line and I think it was all nudes. I love nude lipstick. I think that it was supposed to be satin finished if I remember correctly. It doesn't even say the name on here. But y'all, I was so disappointed in this because for one, this is like a $28 lipstick and the packaging feels so cheap. It feels like it could have been an e.l.f. lipstick. It does have the little magnet, but it just has no weight to it. It feels like just very like plasticky. When I pulled it out of the cardboard packaging it was in, I was like, ooh, that's not exactly what I expect out of a $28 lipstick. But I could get past that. Packaging is not everything to me by any means. This is the shade Platinum, and I don't know if it was just this shade in particular, but I really didn't like the formula on this. I'll go ahead and swatch it for you guys. It's a very, very light pink. I ended up doing the thing that a lot of nude lipsticks do or nude lip glosses. We have a few to talk about today where it just looks very gross on the lips. And I know I have dry lips, but still, even when I exfoliate and moisturize, it like sinks into all the lines. It just looks really, really gross and it doesn't look flattering. And I also felt like it wasn't really that satiny, like it looks more of a very, very natural finish. It's not the worst lipstick product I've ever tried, but just like given the price, I really, really was taken aback and disappointed and not really wanting to try anything else from the brand. I wish I had returned this, but I always forget to return things in time. So it's here with me. Maybe I should give it another chance because I haven't touched it in a long time. Okay, so next let's just go ahead and talk about an indie brand overall that I kind of felt very disappointed in their product and I was so excited to give them a try. I tried them for the first time in the video that I did that was like indie makeup brands you've never heard of from around the world and this was the brand that I did for the USA. So that's gonna be the brand Clove and Hollow. I didn't hate everything that I tried from them. I have a foundation that's all right, I have a bronzer that's all right, but I felt like these three products in particular I really, really didn't like and I think the order that I made from them was like $100 or something. But at the end of it, nothing became a favorite which kind of made me feel like the whole order was almost a regret, but first I'll say this, this concealer, this is the shade 01. I was really disappointed in this because of the shade range. I know I'm very fair, but just I'll just show it to you guys. So, so wrong for my skin. This was the lightest shade that they have. It's way too dark, way too pinky. And I think the thing that really annoyed me with this shade is that their foundation, the lightest shade, is so light. It's one of the fairest foundations I have. And then this is their concealer. I'm like, how do you have a foundation for me? But your concealer is three shades darker than my skin tone. So this felt like a waste of money. Sometimes I'll use concealers that are a little bit too dark for me and I'll mix them in with other concealers, but I think that's kind of a pain. I don't prefer to do that. I'll also use them as like a trick. Instead of using like the Becca under eye um, corrector, I'll put a little bit of a darker concealer underneath, kind of let it dry down, and then I'll put a lighter concealer on top and then can kind of help cover the dark circles more. That's more of a trick for very fair skin. So, I mean, I could still get some use out of it, but it's not what I wanted it to be for sure. And then their lip products. I don't think you guys have ever seen me use these on camera because I tried them multiple times and every time I would put them on and then I would be like, ooh, that looks really, really, really bad. Let me try something else. So this is the shade Frosting and it is a very light pale pink. I was excited about it because I thought it would be like a MAC Myth dupe or something along those lines because it's just such a pale shade. So there's what it looks like. I guess it looks a little bit more peachy compared to the Lawless one. 
but again it just looks so 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 bad on the lips and i feel like if you put a gloss on top of this it just looks even worse which is when i tried their gloss for the first time and i tried it with the lipstick and then i tried it alone and both times i just don't love it this is the shade bubbly and it's one of how do i even do this it's one of those like click up pen whatevers and again a very light soft pink but it's super thick and it just emphasizes the lips in the worst way like it's it's not a good formula in my humble opinion okay so let's talk about some eyeshadow really quickly this was the worst formula that i tried in the year of 2020 it's going to be the alien cosmetics quads i did a full review on these and i talked about them recently as being a letdown in the any makeup releases tag which actually went up the day before you're seeing this so it might feel a little bit redundant but I really, really, really regretted buying these after using them. I tried all of them. I did a look with each one of them for a video and the mattes were mostly just super sheer. They didn't build. Some of the shimmers just felt so dry. I felt like the formula of this was really, really cheap. And I see Alien Cosmetics creating these really beautiful color stories. But I just feel, I feel very hesitant to buy from them again because I felt like this was kind of a waste of money. I don't want to reach for them. And I don't even feel like I'm that picky with eyeshadows. Like as long as they blend and build and last throughout the day, then we're good. All right, next. This one made me sad because it's one of my favorite brands, but this is the Alamar Cosmetics Pero Primero Primer. And I loved the name of this. I thought it was so, so cute because it means butt first primer. And uh, this one, okay, it's not a complete... 110% fail because I figured out a way to make it work but I just don't understand how anyone likes this as an eyeshadow primer because it is so sticky I can't get eyeshadows to blend on top of it it will literally ruin my whole eyeshadow look anyways as I was saying this will literally ruin my entire eyeshadow look if I use it as an all-over primer because it's just so sticky like I guess I don't know I don't I want to see if I can show you guys this I used it several times on camera trying to get it to work for me and if you set okay so it's there you probably can't see how sticky it is so for one I mean you can tell it's a little bit darker than my skin tone which isn't like the biggest deal because it's just like a little bit yellowish but I was gonna say if you set it down with some like an eyeshadow that's similar to your skin tone that does help it blend a little bit better but still I feel like then it kind of defeats the whole purpose because it's supposed to be an eyeshadow primer that really makes your shadows impactful so I'm just gonna grab a random shade and just show you like how it looks on top of it like as I'm blending it it kind of looks like it's sticking weird it's like patchy in some places I mean my hand is not gonna show as good as my eye but I used it in multiple videos and I was just really really disappointed by it because this is the first product from Alamar that I haven't liked but but the redeeming feature of this is that you can use it as an equivalent to the NYX glitter primer so I'll use it for metallic shadows and use it just on the lid alone after I've already done all my matte work and I can get it to work but it still feels like a regret because it's like $16 or something like that the NYX glitter primer which does the exact same thing for me is like five dollars so i could have just essentially repurchased that eventually but i'm gonna keep using this till i finish it up definitely would not repurchase okay so let's talk about two lip glosses really quickly that i didn't like this first one here is the midas cosmetics and smoky glow gloss in the shade sparkle on this is completely personal preference but i just hate glosses that are like metallic sparkly lips I, I'm not hating on anyone who likes it. Like, I just want to make that completely clear. I definitely think you should always wear the makeup that makes you happy and feel the best. Screw what anyone else thinks. Do you. But for me personally, like, this is not it. As a, as a lip gloss, it's just way, way too much. I think maybe if it was, like, a little bit more sheer, a little bit less of, like, a duochrome because it goes from, like, yellow to pink, Maybe I could make it work as a topper, but it was just way way too much for me And then along with this I wanted to mention the red shade. I don't have it anymore I think I gave it to my little sister But I just really didn't like that one either because it was so Pigmented and it was really hard with the wand that was in there to get like a super precise application So I really didn't enjoy those two glosses But I will say that the other one in the collection 
The nude one was really, really beautiful. That one's a favorite. Okay, next I thought I would throw this in here because the brand, although I didn't know it at the time when I bought this, they are actually independently owned. So that is going to be Beauty Bay, which I thought was actually really, really cool because when I bought this, I was just buying it because I was curious and I hadn't tried anything from Beauty Bay. But this is the Beauty Bay and Nikki Tutorials palette. And this isn't completely all bad, but I was definitely disappointed in it. Oh my gosh. I think one of the coolest things though, I don't really hear people talking about this. It was only mentioned in Nikki's reveal video is how one of the mirrors is like super zoomed in or <laughs> zoomed in. I always say zoomed in magnified, which I pretty much always do my makeup with the magnified side of my bigger mirror and I wear contacts, but when I don't wear contacts and I want to throw a little bit of makeup on, my magnified mirror is so important to me. So I think that's actually really, really cool for travel. The shimmers in here are also absolutely stunning. I love getting really, really good sparkly shadows in a palette that normally bumps palettes up to like favorites. But in this one, I have to say the matte formula kind of ruins it because it's just so thin. It doesn't really want to blend or build. My eyes personally, they like reject thin shadows when they're too thin. My skin is like, no, this, sh this pigment is not allowed to stick. Sorry, goodbye. So I've had that problem with um, Ace Beauté palettes, with different like pressed pigment palettes. So it's kind of a repeating thing for me, but I just really, really was unimpressed by the mattes in here. I wish that they had been done a little bit better. And the thing is too, that they have the Book of Magic palette and I thought the mattes in that were so much better than this one. And that one was cheaper. So that's kind of confusing. I'm not angry about it. Like, dang, I really wish I could return this. Because the shimmers are so beautiful, I will reach for Pride and All In. I'll reach for those more often. So the palette's not a complete loss, but I do wish that the mattes had been formulated better. Then I have Whew, an unpopular opinion, but I really, really didn't like this, and I think it honestly might just be the shade. This is one of the Wayne Goss glosses, and I really can't remember what this was called. It's the High Shine Gloss in the shade Tulip. Overall, I was disappointed by the lipsticks as well. They're definitely not my favorite formula, but if I exfoliate my lips and use them alone and don't put any lip gloss on top of them, I can still kind of make them work. Uh, it's not worth the price to me, but the real fail of the collection to me was this lip gloss because I was expecting a really, really great formula. Again, I think this was a little bit more expensive, maybe like $25, give or take a few dollars. But this shade in particular really, really separates on my lips if I use it by itself, if I use it over a lip liner, if I use it um, over the lipsticks that came in this exact same collection, I feel like it's just a fail no matter what. So I was really disappointed in that. And honestly, I've had a bunch of comments on my video that I did when I said that I didn't like the products from Wayne Goss. And it seems like it might be the nude shades in particular that aren't as good because a lot of the people who were commenting and saying that they had no issues whatsoever and were commenting the shades that they bought, they were the not super, super nude shades. So I think that might have been it because I just feel like really light nudes in general are harder to formulate. Um, but these were like specifically marketed to being for like mature dry lips. I definitely have the dry lips, but it didn't work out for me. So that was a disappointment and even swatched out. I mean, it looks super glossy and pretty, but I never ever reach for that. I also have another gloss that had that same issue for me. This is the Ballet Gloss from Beauty Bay and it's a very similar shade, just a really beautiful light nude. Oh my goodness. Wow, those look so similar. Maybe a little bit less sheer, a little bit less glossy. The Wayne Goss one looks more glossy, but this one separated on the lips really, really bad as well. So last but not least, I wanted to mention the Luxie Beauty Butterfly Collection. I was really wanting to love these. They looked so beautiful, swatched out, and Honestly, one thing is in person, I feel like the duo chromes were so much less noticeable than the pictures. Like on the pictures, they almost looked like lighter multi-chromes. And in person, you can barely see the shifts on these, honestly, which is fine. Like sometimes like cameras and like the perfect angle can capture shifts better than like what they 
tend to look like on the eyes. Like that's just something that happens sometimes. But for me, the real issue is that these last terribly on the eyes. If I use a glitter primer, they're all right. I can get a few hours of wear, but if I don't, they're absolutely terrible. So that was a regret for me purchasing these just because they're shadows I can't really rely on. Even though they do look super beautiful in the pan, not super mad about it because those were one of the more affordable regrets that I had compared to a lot of things here. I think I got everything. Those were all the worst indie products I tried this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know what the worst indie product you tried this year was, and I will see you guys in the next one tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.